What's up, Blueberries? My name is Alton Hilt, and welcome to Episode 3 of Surviving Dust, Getting Started. Today's episode is less of a step-by-step -step guide, and more of a veteran player's insight into making the most of your early choices. I can still remember my first attempt to play Dust 514, and it was pretty pathetic. Looking back at those early days, I recognize now that there was a lot I didn't know. But back then, I didn't know that I didn't know. Fortunately, those were the days of frequent re-specializations, and so I had many chances to learn and redo my poor choices. But those days are long gone, and so I want to introduce you to several concepts that you'll need to know to make the most of your early choices. There is a lot of information for the new player to learn and absorb, so this introduction is going to keep things simple and to the point. Later episodes will go into more depth on just about every topic we cover today. Now, if you haven't already created a Dust514 account, I highly recommend that you use a recruit code to do so. Accounts created using a recruit code will receive a 7-day skill point booster and a Blueprint Original, or BPO, or just Blueprint, assault rifle. BPOs are special pieces of equipment that do not cost any money to use, and they're not destroyed when you use them. Every other piece of gear in the game you'll need to purchase and when you use it in battle, it will be destroyed when you die. In addition to these rewards, you'll also earn a BPO submachine gun and a BPO drop suit as you reach certain milestones. Meanwhile, the person who provided you with the recruit code will also earn gear as you reach those milestones. This method is the only way to gain BPOs in the game, and it's worth doing if you already haven't created your account. So, if you have a friend who's playing Dust514, ask them for a recruit code. You'll benefit, and they will be incentivized to help you reach those milestones, which should greatly improve your early experience with Dust514. Now, if you don't have anyone playing, you're welcome to use my recruit code. And if you do, send me, Alton Helt, a mail in-game. I'd love to help you reach those milestones and unlock that equipment. The only other way to gain BPOs is to spend about $100 or 100 euros, figure that math, and purchase the EVE Online Second Decade Collector's Edition. The Collector's Edition comes with redeemable codes for three drop suit blueprints and three weapon blueprints. Now, before you rush off and throw your hard-earned money at those BPOs, there are some things you should know. One is that BPOs only exist for the most basic level of gear in the game. So, while it is great for reducing the cost of your drop suit fittings, it's not all that great at helping you be competitive on the battlefield. Second is that the Collector's Edition BPOs are all equipment from the Amar racial line. So if you don't use Amar drop suits or weapons, they won't do you much good. Third is that with the announcement of Project Legion, it is not yet clear if BPO equipment in Dust514 will have an equivalent in Project Legion. It's very probable that any BPOs you have now won't transfer. So if you do want to purchase these BPOs, just remember, do it because you want to enjoy the game now, and not because you think it will give you some long-term advantage later. So let's talk about choices now. When you create your character, you will need to choose one of four races. Now this choice is mostly cosmetic as the game doesn't restrict you from choosing any racial drop suit, gear, weapons, or skills. Your choice will determine the look of your form avatar, the picture on your character card on the login screen, and the type of starter gear or starter fits that you receive. There may also be role-playing considerations as each race has some broad principles that govern their gear's strengths and weaknesses. Your choice of racial bloodline has no impact on the game. Your choice of gender does. Your choice of gender will change the look of your drop suits. And while they are visually slimmer, the hitboxes for female characters are the same size as male characters. If you're going to select a character gender opposite of your own, I recommend that you choose a gender neutral name. Alan, Alan, if you play Alan, Dust for any length Alan, of time, Alan, you'll likely Alan, end up on Alan, voice comps. Alan. And Alan! it may be disconcerting to have players Alan! refer to Alan! you by a name that Alan! has a strong gender connotation oh, opposite Alan? your own gender. Steve, but it's just Steve. a suggestion. Steve! Steve! I'd like Steve! to make another Steve! recommendation, Steve! and this Steve! one is a little bit Steve! more important. Steve! If you have no, no, no other no, racial Steve, preference, 
choose Galente as your race. It won't stop you from playing other races, but it is an excellent choice for the new player for reasons that I'll explain now. In order to do that, we're going to need to talk about armor versus shields. As you saw, each race has an armor type that they prefer, and racial drop suits will have bonuses towards their racial tank preference. This is not immediately obvious, as the game makes no attempt to help you figure out your drop suit fittings, and most starter fits are horribly fitted. Just remember, friends don't let friends play with unmodified starter fits. We'll save a full discussion of skills and drop suit fittings for the next two episodes, but there are a few important lessons about tank that you need to learn now. The first and most important lesson is that armor and shields do not share the same mechanics. Armor focuses on large hit point buffers, while shields focused on fast regeneration. Armor's benefits include significantly increased hit points, low skill point cost per hit point gained, lower fitting cost per hit point, and the ability to be repaired by equipment and other players. The downsides to armor are that there is little to no internal repair mechanism, and the most common ways to get armor repair will require you to sacrifice total armor HP. Armor plates will also reduce your speed, sprint speed, turning speed, and jump height. The benefits of shields include significantly increased hit point regeneration, no movement penalties, and an extra ability to enhance shield regeneration without sacrificing total shield hit points. The downside to shields include low total hit points, higher fitting costs per hit point, significantly higher skill point costs per hit point, and no external means to buff or regenerate shields. For new players, hit point buffer matters more than hit point regeneration. Your challenge as a new player is to survive the first firefight. If you can't survive the first fight, it doesn't matter how fast your hit points regenerate. You're dead and waiting to respawn. As you become more proficient at dust, long-term hit point sustainability will begin to matter a lot more. But until you consistently win both your first and second firefights of a match, focus on hit point buffer. And this means focus on armor. This is why I recommended that you choose Galente as your starting race. Galente are strong armor tankers, but their specialization is armor repair. Almost every Galente drop suit will have an internal repair mechanism, and this includes your starter gear. You'll start with about 415 armor points on your Galente starter fits, but you can use militia quality armor plates to instantly achieve 585 hit points with a two hit point per second repair rate. With just a single point in the armor plate skill, you will have over 600 hit points. Just to give you an idea of how significant this amount of hit points is for a new player, let's look at the other starter fits. Mimnitar starter fits have an average of 300 hit points without modification, and a maximum of 320 hit points with modification. This is with no skill points invested. Kaldari starter fits have an average of 330 hit points without modification and a maximum of 450 with modification. Once again, this is without skill points invested. Amar starter fits have an average of 375 hit points without modification and a maximum of 400 hit points. You guessed it, this is without any skill points invested. Now, if you've already created your character, don't biomass that character just yet and start over. Dust doesn't lock you out from using other racial gear, so you can purchase everything you need. It'll just cost you a little bit more if you're not Galente. You'll need to purchase a Militia Galente medium frame and fit it with your weapon, grenade, and equipment of choice, but then put three Militia or basic quality armor plates in the low power slots. These are the ones on the right. That's it for this episode, but make sure to check back for the next two episodes as we cover skills, skill points, and drop suit fittings in more detail. My name is Alton Hilt, and I will see you in the sandbox.